And welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and I've got a sermon prepared for you this week. As you can tell, my voice is not what it should be. I'm still a little bit under the weather. It, it uh, <clears throat> kind of started in the head with sinus, and this time of year we have pollen, and then uh, you know a week of congestion, and then it went down here, and so now I've got chest congestion. But I'm doing everything I can. I appreciate all the emails of people encouraging me and telling me the different remedies, and I've been trying those. And believe it or not, the thing that works the best is Vicks Vapor Rub. Just getting that all over your chest and those vapors coming in are very good. And so I'm doing the best I can to get better. But every week, people keep telling me, Brother Breaker, we need that sermon every week. Please keep preaching, keep teaching. Please give us what the Bible says. So I'm going to do that, and hopefully I don't lose my voice. But I have enough voice to be able to preach to you today. So please keep me in prayer. Today we're going to look at this subject and this subject is going to be important, I believe. This is going to be uh, something that, if you're lost, you need to hear this, okay? If you're saved, listen. This will help you with lost people, hopefully, to help get them saved. But we're going to look at today the self-centered versus the Christ-centered gospel. You see, there's people out there today that claim to be Christians. There are many people in the world that say they're Christians, but they're not preaching the same gospel that the Bible preaches through Paul for us today, the way of salvation. They're preaching a different gospel, and their gospel is a self-centered gospel. It's a gospel in which they themselves are focusing in on themselves, and they're trying to save themselves. And they're telling others, now if you'll do what I did, and look at what you do, and if you do this, then you're saved. But that's not the Christ-centered gospel. The Christ-centered gospel is look to Christ, look to the cross, to be saved. Look to what Jesus did for you. Not what you do to get to heaven. What Jesus did for you. And faith alone in that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3 through 6 is where we'll start today. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. And as you're turning there to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6, I'll go ahead and write this up here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'll kind of try to apply this a little bit to Old Testament versus New Testament. Here's your Old Testament. And what is the Old Testament? Well, we always think of the law, the Old Testament law. And today, what are we under? Well, we're, today we're under the New Testament. And salvation today for the church is by grace through faith. So what we're going to see today is that there are two, maybe more, <laughs> But there are at least two Gospels that are being preached in the world in which we live today. And one of them is the true Gospel of salvation. The other is the self-centered Gospel. The Gospel of getting you to look into yourself and then by doing something try to get God's favor. By you thinking that you can be saved by what you do. And that's not salvation. It's trusting in what Jesus did. I can't stress that enough. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, <coughs> excuse me, verse 3. Through six. Verse 3 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If someone doesn't know the gospel, doesn't understand the gospel, doesn't believe the gospel, then they're lost. That simple. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not hard to understand. The gospel must be preached for a person to understand and believe it and be saved. So if someone doesn't know the true gospel, the Christ-centered gospel, then are they saved? How can they be? Because it's through that gospel that we are saved. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world, notice that's a little g, so that must be the devil, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the mind of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So people who haven't believed are the lost. How do we get saved? Through faith, through believing. Salvation is by believing. It's by faith. Now look at verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So he's talking about the gospel. He's saying we're not preaching ourselves as we ourselves are what saves. We're not preaching to you saying, hey, look at us. We save you. No. Jesus saves you. Don't look at yourself and think you can save yourself. You're saved by faith in what Jesus did. Verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the gospel is like a light. And the gospel light needs to shine. And so that's what we need to do. We need to shine the light of the gospel out into the world. 
And I told you last week, because I was a little sick, this was going to be my Easter message. And I had hoped to, to be able to, to uh, make this the message for Easter. But of course, I was sick and didn't have much of a voice, so I wasn't able to. So I'm preaching this this week. And I believe it's important to remember how important that the gospel is. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. Because the devil wants to blind people to the true gospel. But the gospel is like a light. So those that don't have the true gospel, the Christ-centered gospel, while they're still in darkness and they're lost. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The true gospel is so simple. And it's so simple that the devil tries to complicate it. And there are a lot of people out there, they have been... Uh, uh, deceived into receiving another gospel, a self-centered gospel, rather than the true gospel. Now look at verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might bear well with him. Now a lot of people go, what does it mean you might bear well with him? Well, look at verse 3, but I fear. So Paul is saying, I'm afraid that you will accept those coming, preaching another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And he said, I'm afraid of that. I don't want you to bear with them. I don't want you to accept that. Stick with the true gospel, not the false gospel. Let's go to Galatians real quick. There is out there a false gospel. Actually, there's several of them. And they all have something in common. They all tell you to do something to be saved. So, the self-centered gospel is do something. But the true gospel of Jesus Christ is that Jesus paid it all. He did all necessary for us to be saved. And we're not saved by adding to that. We don't come to God and say, well, Jesus, you know, it's great that you shed your blood and all that and whatnot, but you know... I'm going to do this too to help you save me. No, you can't help God save you. You must come to Him and Him alone for salvation through faith alone, trusting in what He has done for you. Not of our works. It's not our works. But Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called you to the grace of God and to another gospel. Paul had won these people to the Lord, and then he says, man, I just can't understand I've preached to you the Christ-centered gospel, but now you're changing the gospel and making it all about you rather than all about Jesus. How could you, how could you do that? Now, what were they doing? Well, we understand by this book they were trying to get back under the law. But look what it says here. He said, I marvel. Verse 7, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. So there is a true gospel, a saving gospel, the gospel, and then there is a false gospel. The true gospel is this one. This is the true gospel, and it's by salvation through faith. Faith in what Jesus did. This right here is the perverted, false gospel. And what this does is, is this is all focusing in on you and what you do. But the gospel of salvation is not about you and what you do. In fact, the reason you're going to hell is because of what you did. You sinned. The true gospel is centered upon Christ and what Jesus, what Christ did for us. And this is what you got to get a hold of. It's not what I do that gets me to heaven. It's whether or not I have received the free gift of eternal life through Christ, through faith, because I'm trusting completely in what He did for me. It is very easy to spot the difference between the true gospel and a perverted one. The true gospel is Christ-centered, focusing in on what Jesus did for us. What did he do? He shed his blood. He died, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He went up to heaven, put his blood up on the mercy seat, and he, his blood can cleanse us from all sins if we'll come by faith and receive that blood atonement. 
trusting in what Jesus did for us. So the true gospel is the Christ-centered gospel focusing in on what Jesus did. The false gospel, the perverted gospel, is the self-centered gospel, which says, now if you'll do this, then you can go to heaven. So follow me and do what I say. Uh, do this, do that, do the other thing, and when you do this, why well, then you can tell everyone and brag about, look, I'm saved because I did this. That's not how it works. If we can be saved by what we do or did, then why did Jesus die? He died for nothing if we can save ourselves by what we do. But we can't. That's why he had to die. And now we say, you know, Jesus is so great because he's the Savior. Because I can't save myself, I come to him. And I come to him not by my own righteousness, not in my works. I trust in his finished work on the cross. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. You know, that, that, I'll write that up here. It's all about the finished work. The finished work of Jesus. When he died on the cross, what did he say? He said, it is finished. But over here, many times, what do they try to tell you? Well, you got to do works for salvation. And you know what? You just keep working till you die because you're never finished. <laughs> wow. And a lot of people, they, they live in fear their whole life going, well, I hope I'm saved. I, I keep doing this and I keep doing that. And, I, and I'm, trying, I'm trying so hard to do this and that and the other thing so I don't go to hell. It's not, that's not how it works. It's not based upon what you do, but a lot of people, they're trusting in what they do, and they'll never know if they're saved or not because they never know if they did good enough to get to heaven. You know, a lot of people think salvation is a balance. Well, if my good works outweigh my bad works, then God will accept me. No, He won't. It doesn't work that way. You did bad works. You sinned. God won't let sin into heaven, and He won't let a sinner into heaven. So you have to have those sins forgiven and washed away. How are you going to wash them away yourself? You can take a bath every day of your life. You're still a sinner. And you're still in your sins. Water doesn't wash away sin. It's the blood of Christ. And when you by faith accept what Jesus did, that's when He does the work of washing your sins away in His blood. That's when you're forgiven. And that's when you go to heaven. Well, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Paul calls the gospel, the true gospel, the Christ-centered gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. We're going to look at the Christ-centered gospel first, then we're going to go back and we're going to look at the self-centered gospels that are being preached today. In Romans 15, 16, Paul says that he needed to preach this gospel. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, 16. I'm skipping over some verses because I already tell my voice, voice is going, <laughs> but that's okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 16, what does the Bible say? Paul says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. Paul says, Look, I'm not going to brag upon myself and glory in what I say. I'm going to preach the gospel, the Christ-centered, blood-stained gospel, and I'm going to glory in it, because woe unto me if I don't preach this, because this is the only way. To be saved. Now, what is this gospel? Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, a lot of people say, Brother Breaker, say it again. You know, I preach and I try in every message to mention the gospel because it's that important. And here it is, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also have you received, and wherein you stand. So you must receive this gospel. All right? Have you received it? You stand in it. How? By faith. And it says by believing. So salvation isn't by what we do. It's by believing and receiving what Jesus did. And now notice what it says. Verse 2. By which you are saved. Okay, so this is the gospel that saves. It says you are saved in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How? By believing. Faith is believing. So we're saved when we believe. It says, unless you believed in vain. If you keep remembering what I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. What does it mean to believe in vain? Well, it means to believe in your head, but not with your heart. You see, the believing of the gospel is believing with all of your heart. Not just an intellectual acceptance of facts and say, oh, well, I just, yeah, okay, I believe that happened in my mind. No, the Bible says you have to believe it with all of your heart. And it's a heart thing. Salvation is a heart thing. You're trusting in what Jesus did completely without any 
of your own self-righteousness. You come as a sinner to Christ and you trust Him alone and His finished work. What did He do? Verse 3. Now as I read verse 3 and 4, it tells us what the gospel is. And notice, nowhere in verse 3 and 4 does it say, now if you do this, or it's all about you, no. Notice what it says. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So it's all about how Jesus did it. How did Jesus die? He shed His blood. He was buried, but thank God, after He shed His blood, shed every single drop of His blood, he was rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died for our sins. And then he rose again according to the scriptures. All for us. It was all what Jesus did for us to save us. It's not what we do. This is the gospel which saves. This is what Paul says is the gospel. Notice nowhere in this passage does it say, Now if you'll just do this, that, or the other thing, why well, then you'll get to heaven based upon what you do. The gospel is based upon what Jesus did and whether or not you accept it by faith. You believe in the gospel. You receive it by faith. So the gospel is all what Jesus did for us, not what we do. You receive it by faith. Let's go to Ephesians. Some people say, well, faith is a work. That's one of the dumbest arguments I think I've ever heard in my life. People say, yeah, you say there's nothing that you do. Well, you got to receive it by faith, so you do that. Well, you know what? The only thing that you can do that is not a work is believe. Did you ever think about that? The Bible defines what works are. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and let's see if believing, if faith is a work. I think that's one of the craziest arguments I've ever heard. Someone says, well, yeah, but it's what you do. you got to believe. <laughs> the only thing you can do that's not a work is believe. Believing is not a work. And it's not something that we can brag about. Look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. Okay, not of works. And that not of yourselves. Anything that you think that you can do of yourself is the perverted false gospel. The true gospel is trusting in what Jesus did, not what we do of ourselves. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I think the Bible defines very easily right there what a work is. A work is something that you do of yourself, verse 8, that you boast about. So if you've done something and you go around boasting, I did this, I'm saved because I did this, then you've got the wrong gospel. I, Robert Breaker, don't go around saying, I'm saved because I did this. I go around and say, I'm saved because Jesus did that for me. And he told me to believe. And I'm not trusting in my belief. I'm trusting in Him. Do you see how that works? I'm not trusting in the fact that I believed. I'm trusting in what He said. And belief is the only thing I can do to please God that's not a work. Ephesians. Excuse me, we just went to Ephesians. Uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. What does God want from us? What does God want from man? Does God want our works? Well, after we're saved, yeah. After we're saved, we should do good works to please Him. But they don't save us. We do it out of love because we are saved. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, <coughs> look at what Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. God demands something of all men. He demands faith. Faith in what? Faith in the gospel. The true gospel, not the false gospel. See, a lot of people, they think that if I do this, that, or the other thing, well, I'll please God, and God will be so happy with me, He'll pat me on the back and just take me on home to heaven when I die because I'm such a good person. It doesn't work that way. You're a sinner, and God won't allow sinners into heaven. So the best you can do will never be good enough to get to heaven. That's why you need Christ. That's why you need the Christ-centered gospel. That's why you need to come to Christ as a sinner and see that you're lost. Romans 1.16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Salvation is through faith, through believing, not through our works. Romans 2.16, Paul tells us that God's going to judge all men according to his gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. God's going to judge people to see whether or not they have trusted 
in what He did for them. And God demands, Hebrews 11, 6, faith. Faith. Ephesians 1, 13. Faith in what? Faith in the gospel. Faith in the blood. How that Christ died. How did He die? He shed His blood. Romans 3, 25 says, through faith in the blood. So the gospel is all about the blood atonement of Christ. How He died in our place for our sins. Ephesians 1, 13. Look at this. I love this verse. Ephesians 1, 13. In whom ye also trusted... After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So trusting, when you trust, then that's believing and that's faith. I see faith and believing and trusting is all the same thing in the Bible. When I realize I'm a sinner and I can't save myself, and I give up trusting in what I do, and I come to Christ saying, look, I can't save myself. I see myself as I am, a dirty, low-down, sorry, rotten sinner. I trust you. I receive by faith the salvation that God offers because I believe what God says in the Bible. And I'm trusting in that shed blood. I'm trusting in the gospel. And that is not my work. I don't go bragging. Look at me. I'm saved because I trusted. Look what I did. I believe. Look at me. No. It's look at Christ. The Christ-centered gospel. I don't deserve to be saved. It's not about me. It's what He did. Thank God He did it. And He saved me. I'm going to brag on Him for saving me. So that's the Christ-centered gospel. Is that the gospel that you preach? If you go to a church, is that the gospel your church preaches? Or do they teach another gospel? See, there's a lot of so-called religious people out there today that claim to be Christians. But they're not preaching 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. They're not preaching Paul's gospel. You know, a lot of people today claim to be Christians and they don't believe Paul should even be in the Bible. But Paul's in the Bible for a reason. God revealed unto him the gospel of salvation for us today. And that gospel that God gave to Paul was look to Christ to be saved and trust in what he did for you. But the self-centered gospel, the false gospel, the perverted gospel focuses in on you Trusting in yourself, trusting in you, trusting in yourself, or something you do. You do or did. Like a lot of people today, they think, well, I'm going to heaven. You say, why are you going to heaven? They go, well, I, I go to church. So they think, because I go to church, God has to accept me as a Christian and He's going to send me to heaven when I die because I went to church. Where in the Bible does it say you go to heaven because you went to church? Isn't that something that you do? Now, I'm not against going to church, but if a person thinks that that's what saves, then they're thinking that that's the work they do and that God will accept them based upon that work. That ain't right. That's not gonna, that, that dog won't hunt. That's not the way. Others think, well, if I get baptized in water... Why then, I'm going to heaven because I go get, get down in the water and I come out and I say, oh look, God washed my sins away. No, he didn't. All you did was get wet. And you'll go to hell wet. Because that's not what saves you. That was your work. That's something you did. Water baptism does not save you. I have a video on YouTube entitled, Is Water Baptism Essential for Salvation? The answer is no. Now, after you get saved, you can get baptized in water. But it's not the water baptism that saves you. It's not trusting in your baptism. It's whether or not you've trusted in what Christ did that saves you. See, a lot of people misunderstand, and they end up trusting in something they did rather than trusting in what Christ did. Here's an example. Uh, a lot of people today, they say, well, you want to be saved? Well, ask Jesus into your heart. Into your heart. Now, you know what? I don't find one verse of Scripture anywhere in the entire Bible that commands anyone to do such a thing. But that's something that many people today that claim to be Christians say, well, that's the way to be saved. Just say, oh, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart. Open your heart's door. Come on in, Jesus. I invite you in. But isn't that something that you do? Not what Jesus did? Why, if you could get saved by asking Jesus in your heart, then why did Jesus die? See, a lot of people, they ask Jesus to come into their heart, and they go, well, I don't feel him there. I don't know if he's there, so I'm going to ask him again and again and again. And they're thinking, well, because I asked... I must be saved. A lot of people, that same, same thing. They say, well, just ask God to save you. What if you ask God to save you? 
but you don't trust in what Jesus did. Are you saved? No. A lot of people are trusting in their asking rather than trusting in the atonement, trusting in Christ. So they're thinking, I did this, so I deserve heaven because I ask. No, you don't. You don't deserve anything. Have you trusted yet in what Jesus did? You can ask without trusting, and that happens all too often. Other people today, they say, well, if you want to get saved, just repeat a sinner's prayer. Where's that in the Bible? Well, they say, well, it's in Luke, or it's in this place, and it's almost always before Jesus died. And they tried to go to that time before Jesus died and try to tell you to do something. No, it's when you trust, when you believe. It's by faith that we receive Jesus. You can ask Jesus to save you or repeat a sinner's prayer many times and still not be saved. If you're thinking in your mind that that itself is what saves. And unfortunately, I've seen this time and 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 time again. People say, well, Brother Breaker, I, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And I say, well, give me your testament. Well, I asked Jesus into my heart, and I asked God to save me, and, and I got water baptized, and I, I go to church, but I just don't know if I'm saved. And I So every night I get down by the bed, and I say, oh, God, please save me. But I just don't know if I'm saved. Okay, have you heard the gospel? Well, what's the gospel? Well, it's 1 Corinthians 15. Let me tell you what Jesus did. Well, I've never heard that before, Brother Breaker. Okay, well, tell me this. Do you believe? Yeah, I believe that. Okay, then when did you get saved? Well, right now. Because now I believe in this. Okay, so were you saved back here? No, because I was trusting in those things that I did and not trusting in what Christ did. Oh, and, and in that case, then you were lost. And there are a lot of people today that they don't have the true gospel of salvation. They have the self-centered gospel rather than the Christ-centered gospel. And it's a shame. And they're trusting in these things that they've done rather than trusting in what Jesus did. We don't get to heaven based upon what we do or say. We get to heaven based upon whether or not we have trusted in the gospel of Christ. I can't make it any more plain than that. That is what the Bible teaches. <laughs> now i got four points real quick and I'll be done. I find there's four different kinds of people in the world today. I'm running out of room to put them. Let me see if I can make some room up here. The four types of lost people that I see today that are on this side with this, the self-centered gospel. Instead of the true gospel, they have a false gospel. And because they have a false gospel, this is what they do. The first one is the self-righteous. self-righteous. There are people out there that think, I deserve heaven because I'm a good person. And I give alms to the poor, and I do this, and I do that. And I tell you what, my gospel, and the word gospel means good news. And they say, my gospel is, if I do all these good things, then God must accept me and take me to heaven. So I believe in the self-centered gospel, and that gospel is that I'm righteous based upon what I do. I'm self-righteous. And so I think God should accept me because I'm the greatest person that ever lived. <laughs> you ever come across somebody like that? Oh boy, I have. Oh, time and time and time again I come across people and I say, Hey man, are you saved? Do you know what it is to be lost? Have you ever gotten saved? Oh, I'm a good person. <laughs> uh, okay, well that's not what I asked. And by the way, you're wrong, because the Bible says there's no such thing. No, I'm a good person, and I'm trusting in what I do. You know, I do such good stuff that I just don't see how God can't just accept me, because I've done so much for so many. Oh, really? So, you're righteous? Yeah, I'm a righteous person, and I deserve heaven, they say. Well, Romans 3.10 says, and as it is written, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Uh, you lied there, didn't you, buddy? You think you're so righteous, but you're not. But there's a lot of people in the world today that are like that. They think, oh, I am such a good person that I just don't see how God could put me in hell because I'm so good. <laughs> and you look at such people and you go, wow, what's wrong with you? Are you blind? Well, what's wrong with them is that they have invented in their mind their own gospel of salvation, and it's the self-centered gospel. And they're only looking at themselves and how good they think they are, and they think, man, I'm just so good, I deserve to go to heaven. But they're omitting the true gospel of salvation. What does the Bible say about such people? 
Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. A lot of people out there, they think they're so good, and they think they deserve heaven because they're doing good works. And that's what a lot of people think. They think, if I do enough good works, then I just might make it into heaven. And that's a self-righteous person. And they're wrong. They need to realize that the Bible says you're a sinner. And all your righteousness is as filthy rags. That means everything you do that is right, even though it's not a sin, you might help people, you might give alms to the poor, you might do good things for others. But in God's eyes, He doesn't accept it. Because it was the work of a sinner. And you need to see yourself as a sinner. A lot of people think, well, I know I'm a sinner, but if I do good, then I'll go to heaven. That's not how it works. It's not your goodness that gets you to heaven. It's whether or not you accept Jesus as your Savior and trust in His goodness and His righteousness. But a lot of people think, no, it's my works, it's my works. And they do good works thinking they deserve heaven. They're self-righteous. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. See, it's not by the works of man. But these people, the self-righteous, they think, Well, I deserve heaven because I do good works. Their gospel is not the true gospel of salvation. Theirs is the self-centered false gospel. And they're lost. They're lost. The Bible talks about such people in Romans chapter 10. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Have you ever come across such a person? I have. Many of them are very religious people. And their religion teaches a works gospel. And they think, if I do good works, then the works will save me. And they're lost. But in uh, Romans chapter 10, look at verse 2 and 3. For I bear them record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. There's a lot of people out there that think they're more holy than God. That they're more righteous than Jesus. And I don't know if you ever thought about this, but what is such a person doing? A person who thinks they're saved by themselves and their works is a person that's looking at Jesus Christ and going, I'm better than you are. I'm better than you, Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. You think God would ever let a person like that into heaven? Because Jesus Christ never sinned. And he died for your sins. Imagine the audacity to think that you're better than Jesus. And that you deserve heaven based upon your works. That's disgusting. That's someone that doesn't understand the Bible. That's, that's someone that's got a false gospel. And that's someone that's going to split hell wide open. Old preacher said one time, when a person like that dies, he's going to bust a he hole in hell. It'll take the devil two weeks to patch up. <laughs> You're not getting to heaven because of your goodness and your good works. You get there when you come to Christ and trust his finished work for salvation. The next one here I want to say are the self-repentant. There's a lot of people out there that think that they're going to get to heaven based upon their repentance. And they don't define the word repentance as the Bible does. Matter of fact, they don't even know what repentance is. But there's people out there, and I think you'd call these your lordship salvationists, who say, well, you want to get to heaven? Well, you got to come to God, and you got to come, and you got to make up your mind that, you know what, I'm going to quit sinning. And then you got to quit sinning, and then you can get saved. Wait a minute, what? How on earth do you quit sinning? The Apostle Paul never quit sinning. He got saved. He was probably one of the greatest Christians that ever lived, the Apostle Paul. But yet he's the same man that said he was the chiefest of sinners. The Apostle Paul said, Things that I would, I do not. The things that I would not, those I do. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul says, I, I just there's a struggle day by day as a Christian to fight this flesh because this flesh wants to sin. I think it's ridiculous that there's people out there that make repentance such a big issue that they're going around telling people, well, if you didn't repent, then you're not saved. And they don't even explain what the word repent means. And they twist the gospel into making people think, well, if you quit sinning and you clean up your life and then come to God, well, then He'll accept you. Where's that in the Bible? So you got to clean yourself up before you come to God? So it's what you do? Is that what you're telling me? 
No. How does God want you to come to Him? As you are a sinner. Why would you come any other way? If you try to come to Him in your own righteousness, He'll reject you. If you try to say, well, I'm clean now. I've cleaned up my life. Now accept me, Jesus. He's like, well, then why do I need to clean you? What are you coming to me for? I've got the blood to clean you up. But if you think you cleaned yourself, then what, what do you need me for? No, you come to God as a sinner. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, what does it say? Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You come to Jesus for rest. You don't come to Jesus and say, Oh, oh, oh I'm going to quit sinning, Lord, and when I do, I'm coming to you. No, you come as a sinner and you say, Lord, I just, I can't, I can't save myself. Every day I worry about, you know, did I do enough to get saved? Did I do this? Did I? And I just can't do that anymore. I come to you and I trust you as my Savior. Do you know there's rest and salvation? If you get to the point to where you see the difference between these two Gospels, and you realize, I've been trusting in what I did, and that won't save me. I don't trust in that. Now I trust in what Jesus did. There is rest. There is peace in that. And I find rest for my soul in Christ. I find a great peace in worshiping Him and trusting in what He did. I remember before I was saved, I was a lost religious person until I was 18 years old. I was in church most of the time in my life. I was baptized in water. I had asked Jesus in my heart. I asked God to save me just about every night. I repeated the sinner's prayer over and over and over again, but I was lost. Because I was trusting in something I did. When I heard the gospel for the first time, and my dad sat me down and showed it to me, and I understood, then I realized, look, it's not what I do. It's what he did. And I gave up my own self-righteousness. I gave up my own repentance because I was thinking, well, I repented, Lord, please accept my repentance, thinking that repentance meant quit sinning. I did my best to quit sinning. But, then I, but I realized it's not what I do. It's trusting in what he did. And I trusted in what Jesus did for me. And there was this rest. There was this peace that came over me. There was this just this great whew, moment. Yes. It's like a weight all lifted off my shoulders. Now I'm saved. And I know I'm saved because it's not me trying to save me. He saved me. Now there's great peace. There's a lot of people out there that try to say, well, you want to get saved, you've got to repent first. Well, what does repent mean? It means change mind. Yeah, yeah, you, there's some repentance that takes place in salvation, but it's a changing of your mind from trusting in yourself to trusting Christ. From trusting your righteousness to trusting His righteousness. From, from looking at yourself as thinking you're the Savior and you're so good that you can save yourself to realizing, no, I can't save myself. I come to Christ and I trust Him. See, the word repentance has several defini definitions. One definition is to feel sorry for something. The other definition is to change your mind or direction from one thing to another. If you're saved, then you have repented. I remember uh, when I was in Bible school, there were people going around saying, Oh, to get saved, you have to repent. You have to do it. And it's something you have to do. The only work you have to do to get saved is to repent. And when I heard that, and some other brothers in the class heard that, we said, You know what? That doesn't sound right. I remember one of my friends in Bible school, when the Bible teacher said that, said, when you're saved by repenting, and then you believe. And he raised his hand, my friend, and he says, that smacks of works, brother. That sounds like a works gospel. <laughs> no, you get saved when you believe. And so people begin to run around and ask, well, Dr. Ruckman, tell us, you know, uh, is repentance a part of salvation? I mean, do you repent first and then believe? Do, how? And Dr. Ruckman got up in class one day, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, a lot of people run around here running, running around wondering if they repented enough. And if their repentance was good enough and valid and if God saved them or not. And Dr. Ruckman said this. He goes, let me tell you something. If you're saved, you have repented. So quit worrying about it. And people said, explain. He says, okay. Repentance means a change of direction and a change of mind. If you're saved, then your mind has been changed from unbelief to belief. So you repented. So you don't have to wonder, well, did I repent or not? If you believe the gospel and you're saved, then your mind's been changed to the truth, so you're saved. That was so simple. But there's a lot of people out there today that try to make repentance into a work, a separate work that you must do first before you can be saved. That is a false gospel, and that is the self-centered gospel to get you to do something 
It's not what we do that saves us. What does Philippians chapter 3 say? Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Paul says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Now what is the context? Look at verse 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Apostle Paul says, Look, I did everything the law said. You could actually say that I am one of those guys that kept the law. But he says, But I'm not coming to God saying, Now look at me how I quit sinning. Look at how good I am, God, that I keep the law. He says, all my righteousness, all the good that I did, Paul says, to me, that's loss. Because I realize that it's not the good that I did that saved me. It's coming to Christ. Look, look at verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all the things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I might be may win Christ. Paul says, all the good works that I ever did in my life, I look at that as horse manure as dung. What is dung? It's a really gross, disgusting, nasty thing that we don't want to think about. And it's smelly, and it's stinky, and it's nasty. But Paul says, all the good that I ever did, as far as I'm concerned, is a pile of horse poop. Because that was a sinner doing good. But I was still a sinner. What I want is not to trust in my dung, my works, but to trust completely in the finished work of Christ. You think Paul was a lordship salvationist? Not on your life. Paul said the best that I could ever do is stinky turd in the sight of, of God. Now if that offends you, I'm sorry. But he used the word dung. I guess I can use the word turd. But that's what Paul is saying. You think he's trying to make a point there that we shouldn't trust in our works? That's what it sounds like. What does he say more? Verse 9, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. Paul says, I am not trusting in what I did. That's dung to me. That's my own righteousness, and my own righteousness stinks like filthy rags. I'm trusting in the righteousness of Christ. I believe in what he did, and I'm trusting in that to save me. Paul wasn't trusting in anything that he did. He's trusting only in what Jesus did for him. The next thing I want to say is these people that have the self-centered gospel, oftentimes they end up becoming self-repeating. Now what do you mean by self-repeating, Brother Breaker? Well, let's go to Romans chapter 10. There's a lot of people out there that will not take the time to preach the gospel like I have done today. They won't take you to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15. What they'll do is they'll just go over here to Romans and they'll just say, well, just call with the mouth only on the Lord. And they'll say, if you just ask God to save you, oh, God save me, then you're saved. And they use Romans 10.13 to teach that. Now, what does Romans 10.13 say? Romans 10.13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And they take that passage and they pervert it. And they say, call means ask. No, it doesn't. Call and ask are two different words. But they take that verse out of context, and they say, if you with the mouth will just say, oh God, save me, then you'll go to heaven. And so many churches and many ministers in the world today, instead of preaching the Christ-centered gospel and pointing people to the blood of Christ, Christ crucified, pointing people to resting in the finished work of Christ, trusting in what Jesus did from the heart, and that's what's so important, we believe from the heart, this has got to be faith from the heart. Not just a head belief. You know, even the devils believe and tremble. The devils with their head know that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. But they're not trusting in that to take them to heaven because they can't. Devils can't be saved. But we can when we believe. <laughs> but there are people out there that say, well, if you'll just call with the mouth and say, oh God, I'm a sinner, please save me. Or you'll repeat the sinner's prayer. Or you ask Jesus in your heart or ask God to save you. Why, well, you're saved. And so people will do that. And then they'll believe that they're saved because they did that. And oftentimes the sinner in his mind thinks, I'm saved because of that. Are we saved because of that? Are we saved because of that? One is what they did. The other is trusting in what Jesus did. Now what happens if a person calls upon the Lord and says, oh God, save me, but they're not trusting from the heart? Are they saved? Not in your life. What does the Bible say? Well, let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 28. 
<clears throat> Acts chapter 28 and verse, it's got to be here somewhere, I know I had it written down. Acts 28, 27. Acts 28, 27. Look at the order of salvation. There is an order to salvation. I have a video on YouTube called The Order of Salvation. I think that's the one that most people told me they've gotten saved watching because they understood that there's an order to salvation. And if you get it out of order, then you're not saved. What is the order of salvation, if you will? Acts 28, 27. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Should be converted. Conversion is salvation. There's something that's got to take place before you can be saved. First thing you need to hear is the gospel. If you've never heard, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, if you've never heard that salvation is by faith in what Jesus did, then you're not saved. And that's what this self-centered gospel teaches. It says, forget 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, don't look at the cross, you just come and you get... Here's one of the things that I hate the most. I've heard people preach, if you want to get saved, just come to God the best way you know how. And when I hear that, I go, No! What if the best way you know how is the wrong way? <laughs> then you're still lost. No, you don't come to God the way you think is right. Well, in fact, there's a verse in the Bible that says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the way therein is the way of death. It's not the way you think that gets you saved. You have to think the way God thinks. So you have to hear what God said is His gospel. And when you hear that gospel, you have to understand. Look at that verse understand with their heart. You have to understand the gospel. Then salvation is when you believe. By faith, we see that in many other verses, and that's when your conversion takes place. So conversion only comes when a person has heard, understood, and believed. Well, the self-centered gospel leaves out the true Christ-centered gospel. And it tells a person, well, you don't have to hear anything. You don't have to know anything. Just say, oh, God, save me. I don't want to go to hell, and you'll go to heaven. But where is the faith from the heart in the true gospel? It's left out. Now, preaching like this, people will say, well, Brother Breaker, you're against prayer. What a load of hockey. I am not against prayer. I believe in prayer. But I don't believe that the prayer itself saves you. My daddy got saved while he was praying. My daddy was praying and he was quoting scripture and he was saying, Lord, you know, all this was in my life. I've done all these things, but I know that it's worthless. And Lord, I, I know you did all this for me. So Lord, I just, I just put aside all this. I, I put all that just behind me. And I'm not trusting in this. Lord, I trust only in what you've done for me. And my dad said, that's it. Now I'm saved because while he was praying and talking to God, he believed in his heart in what Jesus did. So you see, you can get saved when you pray, but it's not the prayer that saves you. And a lot of times people over here think, well, if you do the prayer, then the prayer saves. No, Jesus saves, not the prayer. And so oftentimes there are people that become self-repeating. And this has happened to me before I was saved. This has happened to many people. I get emails all the time from people saying, Thank you, Brother Breaker, for preaching the true gospel. I was one of those self-repeaters. <laughs> I was instructed in my religion. The way to get to heaven is just ask God to save you or repeat the prayer. So I'd get down by my bed every night and go, Well, Lord, I, I still don't know if I'm saved or not, so please, I ask you, please save me. And every night, over and over. And they weren't saved. What were they? They were self-repeaters. They kept saying a prayer over and over and over. They kept inviting Jesus into their heart over and over. They kept asking God, please forgive me of my sins, over and over. But they never trusted in the gospel. I say, well, when did you get saved? Well, most of them say, you, the first time I ever heard the gospel was when you were preaching it. And when I understood, that's when I got saved. I say, well, did you ever pre repeat the prayer ever again? No, there's no need to, because now I'm saved. See, before they were trying to do something, and they were thinking the prayer, when God hears it, why well, he just might accept it and save me. Well, then why'd you do it again and again and again? Because deep down you know that you weren't saved because you weren't trusting in Jesus. You were trusting in your prayer that you said. You weren't trusting in the blood that God shed. <clears throat> and it's sad. There's a lot of people like that. Now, the last thing I want to say 
is this. And you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That call is accompanied by believing. If you call on God without believing in the gospel and the blood atonement of Christ, then you're still lost. So whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord by faith in the gospel shall be saved. But if you call without it, you're still left. And the context of Romans 10 shows that clearly. I don't have time to go there, but you need to read the context of Romans chapter 10. The last thing I want to say is this, the self-reforming. The self-reforming. Now this is the group that says, well, okay, so let me start from the top. The self-righteous crowd thinks you're saved by works. So if I do good works, then I'm saved. The self-repentance crowd thinks, well, I've got to do a work first. I've got to repent, and then I can believe. So theirs is a work plus faith. The self-repeating crowd, they are thinking that it's what they pray or say. So they're thinking, well, with my mouth, if I do something, then God's got to save me. But they're not believing from the heart. They're just saying something from the mouth. The self-reforming crowd, these are your Pentecostals, your Charismatics, your, your faith plus works crowd. They'll say, oh, yeah, come and believe in the gospel, sure. But if you don't help God by continually doing good works, well, then you can lose it. You know what? You can't lose salvation. I get so exhausted from people sending me emails, and I still get some from people that say, Brother Breaker, OSAS is a heresy. Once saved, always saved is a heresy. And I say, no, no, you're the heresy. When you're saved, the Bible says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Bible says you have been given a gift of eternal salvation and eternal life. It says you have passed from darkness to light. It says you are now a son of God. How can you become unborn again? You've been born again when you're saved. Now you become a son of God. The only question is, will you be an obedient son or a disobedient son? So you can't lose your salvation. You can lose rewards in heaven, but you can't lose salvation. But there are people out there that say, no, you can believe all this, but now you've got to do all this or you'll lose it. I don't believe those people are even saved to begin with because they're adding to what Jesus did to think that they're saved. So they're saying, well, you know, Jesus did whatever and it was great, but now I've got to do this too. That's a faith plus works. And so what do they do? Well, when they sin, they say, well, I sinned and I'm sorry. And so, Lord, I'm sorry. And so now I'm going to do better. And I'm going to keep doing better. And I'm going to do better. And, and I'm going to just keep doing it because I sure don't want to lose it. And then when they lose it, then what? Well, I'll get it back. <laughs> You'll get it back, huh? How many times did Jesus die again? The Bible says once for all. The one sacrifice forever. Either the blood of Jesus forgives of all sins, or it doesn't forgive of any sin. It's not, well, he'll forgive you of all your sins, and then by your works you continually keep yourself safe. That's not salvation. That's someone that doesn't understand the Bible. Romans chapter 4, verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You see, we're saved by faith alone, not by the works that we do. It's not by what we do that saves us. It's by trusting completely in what Jesus did for us. A lot of people out there, they think, well, you know, I believe in Jesus, but then i got to do this or I'll lose it. You have completely misunderstood the gospel. The gospel is not you believe and work safe. The gospel is you're saved by faith alone. Now because I'm saved, I work for Jesus. But I don't work to keep salvation. <laughs> and it's sad that people don't understand saying that. What does the Bible say? Does the blood of Jesus cleanse from all sin? Some people have this idea in their mind that, well, when you get saved, then God forgives all your past sins. But the future sins, why? If you sin, you lose it. Well, guess what? There's bad news. If you can lose your salvation, the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 10 says you can never get it back again. <laughs> so, what, so what is he talking about? Well, it must be a different dispensation. must be a tribulation because in the Bible, in Paul's gospel, once saved, always saved is the teaching. Because here's what he says. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through faith. 
through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. When I got saved by trusting in what Jesus did, the Christ-centered gospel, all my sins, past, present, even the ones I haven't done yet, future, are forgiven through the blood of Christ. Now people say, well, you just want an excuse to sin. No, no, I have a video on YouTube entitled Grace, Not an Excuse to Sin. I don't look at that and go, woohoo, now I can go do wrong. No, I look at that as, thank you, Jesus, that makes me want to do right knowing that you have forgiven me of all my sins. It's not what I do that gets me saved. It's not what I do that keeps me saved. I trust Him, He saves me, and He keeps me saved. And I thank God for that. So let me close with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I've done the best I could today under the circumstances of trying to show you the self-centered gospel versus the Christ-centered gospel. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 1 through 5. And let's see what the Apostle Paul says, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Apostle Paul says, the only thing that matters to me, not what you do or have done, but Christ dying in your place for your sins. Now what have you done with that? Have you looked at it? Have you heard it? Have you understood that it's all Him? Not what you do or have done. It's all what He did. And forgiveness is based upon trusting in Him, not trusting in yourself. It's all about Christ crucified, not about you. Verse 3, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul says, don't trust in the self-centered, man-made, perverted, false gospel in which it tries to get you to put your faith in what men tell you. All these are men-made gospels, made up. This is not the way to heaven. The true gospel is faith in standing in the finished work of Christ, trusting what Jesus did. Are you saved? What are you trusting in? Are you trusting in the Christ-centered gospel? Are you trusting in the man-made gospel, the self-centered gospel? I hope this will be a blessing to you. We'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.